Power Industrial Truck Safety Forklift Operator Training. Forklift Statistics. Each year, power industrial truck cause approximately 85 deaths every year. Forklift accidents that result in serious injury total 34,900 annually. Non-serious injuries related to forklift accidents reach 61,800 each year. A forklift overturning is the most common incident, accounting for 24% of all forklift accidents. If companies implemented more stringent training policies, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, estimates that about 70% of forklift accidents in the U.S. could be prevented. Why are forklifts so dangerous? They can weigh up to 9,000 pounds, which is three times heavier than the average vehicle. They can travel up to 18 miles per hour. Unlike a car, forklifts only have brakes in the front, making them harder to stop. Forklifts are heavier in the rear to compensate for the heavy loads being carried in the front. This uneven weight distribution makes a forklift difficult to handle. Why are forklifts so dangerous continued? A forklift is turned by the rear wheels, causing the rear end to swing outward, increasing the chance of tipping over during tight turns, which is different than an automobile. Loads are carried in front, which can obstruct the driver's view. Forklifts are often used to raise heavy loads to considerable heights, a combination that is always dangerous. Permits. Your power industrial truck permit must be issued to you by your current employer, carrier made available for inspection during working hours, retraining is required every three years unless a forklift incident occurs or the employee was observed operating in an unsafe manner. Safe operating procedures. No use of cell or smartphones when operating a forklift. No talking, texting, internet use, or emailing. No arms, legs, hands, feet outside of the forklift while it is moving. Secure loose items. Watch for lights, sprinkler heads, and other overhead clearance problems. Safe operating procedures. Never leave the forklift while it's running. Loads should be kept well back against the carriage and properly centered on the forks. Less weight can be lifted with the tips of the forks as can be lifted when the forks are positioned all the way under the load. Operating hazards. Workplace hazards. Ramps, uneven roadways, railroad tracks, slippery floors, poor lighting, congestion, tight aisleways. Loads. Larger bulky, uneven weight, broken pallets, poorly stacked, unbanded, double stacked. Pedestrians. Horseplay, unaware of forklift areas, not paying attention. Most common forklift accidents. These include collision with a pedestrian, struck by falling material, crushed between forklift and a surface, fall from platform on forks, accident with a victim on or in moving forklift, crushed by forklift tipping over due to heavy load. The five most common forklift accidents include insufficient training, speeding, poor marking, collision with other vehicles and pedestrians, poor workplace design. Attachments. They must be specific to the vehicle and have operator training, weight of attachments, and increased load center. Attachments continued. Only approved safety platform can be used to lift an employee. Attach platform to the forks by an enclosed sleeve, a safety chain, or mechanical device so the platform cannot tip over or slip. Below the illustration shows a correct cage attached to a forklift. Pre-operational inspection. As an authorized operator, it is your responsibility to make sure your forklift functions safely and properly. 
OSHA requires pre-operational inspections before use. Contact your supervisor or person in charge immediately if any deficiencies are identified. What inspection items to look for? Engine, fluids, battery, radiator, chassis, mass, chains, forks, tires, lights, safety devices, horn, seat belts, backup alarms, fuel systems, propane tank, diesel slash gasoline, batteries, seating area, seat, gauges, control steering, and brakes, operational and parking. Nameplate. OSHA requires a legible nameplate for each forklift. It should have the capacity and the load center. And this is an example of a nameplate with the capacities. The area in the with the arrow on the name pad indicates the maximum load weight given mass height is A and load center is B. This is an example of the nameplate for your forklift. Operating forklift. Only trained authorizers operators immediately report forklift related accidents. No person should stand under elevated portion of lift truck. Lights shall be used when the general lighting is less than two lumens. Operating the forklift continued. Forklift controls operate only from the driver's seat. We want to never block exits or emergency equipment. Smoking is not permitted. Always drive forward up steep ramps to avoid spilling your load. Operating forklift continued. When climbing out of the forklift, exit the same way you entered, if possible. And then we also want to use the three-point contact. And the illustration shows what a three-point contact is. Operating forklift continued. We want to never turn with an elevated load. And the diagram shows what happens when you turn with an elevated load. We want to bring the load down before we make the turn. Tipping over. If we're ever in an incident where we're going to tip over, this puts us in the best position. Do not jump off. Hold on to the steering wheel, stay inside the cage, brace your feet, and a lean away from the fall. And also wear your seat belt. This shows tipping over, the person jumping out, and potential of the forklift falling on them. Again, shows an illustration of tip over, load is elevated, and they're turning. And it illustrates what to do to put us in the best position. Loading slash unloading. Before raising a load, understand the approximate weight of the load, location of the load, center of gravity, inspect load for stability, projections, damage pallets before lifting, Restack unstable loads. Never place weight on the back of a lift forklift to increase the capacity. The same weight cannot be lifted with the tips of the forks as can be lifted when the forks are positioned all the way under the load. And this shows examples of lifting something over the capacity, which raises the back wheels off the ground, tips it over, and then an unstable load which has the potential to fall. Loading and loading continued. Towing always done from the rear towing pin. We can only tow if we have a towing pin. Forks should be used only for picking up loads, not for pushing, shoving, or ramming. A load should be kept well back against the carriage and properly centered on the forks. And this shows an example of a towing pin where you can tow from. This is your forklift, which does not have a towing pin, so we can't tow. Traveling. Always look in the direction of travel. Keep body inside of cage. When moving, the mask must be not be raised. You want to be roughly six inches off the ground. Sound the horn at intersections and blind corners. Operate at safe speeds. When turning, watch the real swing. The rear tends to swing out, so we got to watch that. Clearance under overhead installations. 
this shows illustration of traveling. We want to sound the horn in case pedestrians or somebody's walking through. And we want to make sure that the loads are stable before we transport them. Traveling continued. Avoid loose objects and holes. holes. If load blocks view, we want to travel in reverse. We can, cannot carry passengers. Always make eye contact with pedestrians and other personal industrial trucks. Forklifts operators when they are in the vicinity. Safe distance from edge of ramps or docks. No stunt driving or horseplay. Traveling continued. When following another truck, you should maintain approximately three truck lengths from the vehicle ahead of you. If the load blocks your forward visibility, we travel in reverse. We have to keep our arms and legs inside the running lines, the mask of the forklift. When operating your forklift on a public road, you should obey the rules of the road as though you were in a car, yield, stop sign, etc. This shows traveling, so the load blocks are view. So we have two options. We travel in reverse or we have a spotter. Traveling, an operator shall not drive up to an employee standing in front of a fixed object. Fork should always be raised a short distance off the ground when traveling with a load. It is unsafe to carry loads that weigh more than the rated capacity. This shows the proper way. The illustration on the left is an employee operating with the load roughly six inches off the ground, and the illustration on the left is wrong where it's elevated. This is an illustration of a person riding on the forks, lifting another forklift. Lots of wrong things going on in this illustration or picture. Ramps and railroad tracks. We never want to turn on a ramp. On ramps, the load should be upgrade. Ascend and descend ramps slowly. Railroad tracks are crossed diagonally. We should never park within eight feet of the center of the railroad tracks. Loading docks. We want to inspect the loading dock. We want to check the trailer floor condition. Trailer wheels should be chalked. We want to check the dock lock. Semi trucks and trailers shall have two wheels blocked or restrained by other mechanical means when being boarded by a power industrial truck. Ensure forklift operations are complete before the truck driver leaves. This illustration shows when wheels are not chalked or if the dock plate is not locked, the trailer slides out and there's potential for the forklift to fall to the ground. Again, this shows an illustration of a trailer that's not secured and the forklift causes it to tip over. Again, another illustration of wheel chalks not in place, forklift slides out. Unattended fork trucks. OSHA definition of unattended fork truck is more than 25 feet away from the fork truck, outside the line of the operator's sight, and if it's unattended, we have to park it. We have to lower the forks to the ground, set the controls to neutral, set the parking brake, shut the truck off, and at the end of the shift, we have to shut off the fuel. When we are parking the forklift, we want to lower the forks to the ground, set gear to neutral, set the parking brake, turn off the key and remove it. And then if it's propane, we want to turn the propane tank uh, gauge or fuel off. In summary, we want to follow the manufacturer's safe operating procedures. Only trained and authorized operators can operate a forklift. When training individuals to operate the forklift, be sure to follow the OSHA guidelines. Know the load capacity and center of gravity of the forklift. Questions. Now we'll go through a 10 question quiz. Question one. What is the maximum person limit of your forklift? A, one, B, four people, C, two people, D, 1.5 people. Question two, 
the forklift permit is good for a blank year period. A2, B3, C4, D1. Question three. It is unsafe to carry loads that weigh more than the rated capacity of the forklift. A true, B false. Question four. A forklift truck turns in the same manner as an automobile. A true, B false. Question five. A good driver will develop the habit of making fast, sharp turns. A true, B false. Question six. A load should be kept well back against the carriage and properly centered on the forks. A true, B false. Question seven. It is okay to have your arm or leg outside of the running lines of the truck if there are no obstacles in the work area. A true, B false. Question eight. A safe distance under normal conditions is approximately blank truck lengths from the truck ahead. A1, B4, C3, D5. Question nine. If the lift mechanism on your truck makes an unusual noise, you should tell your supervisor about it at the end of the day. A true, B false. And the final question 10, your power industrial vehicle should be thoroughly inspected at the beginning of the shift. A true, B false.